We're with Bob Peoples. He is Executive Director of CARE, the Carpet America Recovery Effort. And Bob, it's always great having you on here. Well, it's great to be with you again, Dave. Thanks for the opportunity. Now, I'm sure everybody knows what CARE is, but in case somebody's been in Peru for the last decade or so, this is based in California. Uh, it's adopt they adopted a product stewardship and extended producer responsibility. This was based on uh, legislation. It came into effect in July of 2011, and the, basically the program is to divert post-consumer carpet from landfills. And uh, CARE is the administrator of this program, and results for the first quarter have just come in, and that's why we've called this meeting. And um, what's the word? Are you pleased? Oh, I think we've had an interesting quarter. I think we're making progress. I, uh, people that know me will tell you I'm an optimist. Uh, but we're still in the learning mode here. Uh, we've had a lot of challenges. We've made a lot of modifications to the program over the last couple quarters. In particular, since I got back in September, um, the, the program was really just gaining traction. And um, as a result of that, we've learned several things. We've implemented some new procedures for our agreed upon procedures to try to catch problems before they occur. We've improved our internal controls, and, um, and we're doing a better job of tracking, but more importantly, how do you um, share that information in a visual context that's easy for people to understand and to see the trends now. After seven full quarters, we can see the trends. And this would be share the information. You share this with members, obviously. Yeah. No, well, we share it with care members, and we share it with the public. After each quarter, once the data comes in, we do a internal deep dive review of all the information, and it's confidential. The individual company data is not shared. We review that with the Sustainable Plan Committee. We call that the SPC. Um, we agree on what the recommendations will be for the quarter, and those recommendations go forward to the SFOC, the Sustainable Fund Operating Committee, who has the ultimate responsibility uh, for administering the funds of the people of California with, under AB 2398. Okay. Now, I should, have, uh, I should have mentioned that, according to AB 2398, this program assesses $0.05 cents per square yard on all carpet sold within the state of California. That's correct. All carpet, both broadloom and tile, are uh, covered by this program. Things like uh, bath mats, exports, and such are not impacted. Uh -huh. Okay. So then the results of the first quarter are those in dollars and cents. Is this through pounds of uh, throughput, or, or how, do you, how do you state that? Well, the fee is assessed at the time of purchase of the carpet, so the fee gets passed on to the consumer or to the purchaser. Uh, it is required to be visible on the receipt so that they understand the funds are going toward a reclamation program. Of course, realistically, we can't recycle all of the pounds that are sent to the landfill in California, but that's growing. Obviously, our target is to grow that. And then the mills, on a quarterly basis, submit a confidential report of the total number of square yards that have been sold in that quarter, multiply that number by a nickel a square yard, and then each mill will write a check to CARE, which goes into the AB 2398 fund. It's separate from the CARE funds. And uh, we amass that on a quarterly basis. So, for example, for the uh, first quarter of 2013, uh, we collected uh, $1.2 million from the mills based on the number of square yards that they've sold. I see. And that compares how with, with previous quarters and the, and, and the first quarter of 2012? Well, we see, we see variation from quarter to quarter, which we expect because... Carpet recycling operations are tied to the selling cycle, and we know we sell more Q2, Q3 than you do in Q1 and Q4. So uh, quarter over quarter, Q1 2012 versus 2013, we're up a little bit in terms of sales, which is good news for the industry. So in terms of th throughput, material that's collected on the front end, how I have to imagine that's up as well. Well, actually, the, the uh, output, we call this the output, the recycled output from the processors, uh, is up for uh, Q1 versus Q4 last year. And overall, 
since the program began, we're running about 10% on average of what's being recycled uh, in the state of California. And um, the numbers for the last two quarters of the year were up closer to about 14%. Our goal for 2012 was 12%, so we're a little ahead of goal. Ultimately, our goal when our portion of the program ends at the end of 2015 is about 16% recycle of all the carpet that goes to landfills in California. Okay. You said when your portion of this ends, what, right. what do you mean? So the Cal Recycle approved CARE as the carpet stewardship organization through the end of 2015. Oh. So at, the, at that point in time, either we'll be reappointed or someone else can come in and write a plan that would have to be reviewed and accepted by the state of California. It's a pretty onerous process. I'm not sure anybody's ready to step forward and do that, but you never know. So you're pretty safe in saying you're probably going to be re reappointed. Well, we hope so. We hope so, and, and I, I'd say we hope so, Dave, based on not because we're the only ones and nobody wants to do the heavy lifting, but because I think we're showing progress, managing a very challenging initiative uh, through a very steep learning curve, and uh, we're making adjustments on a fairly significant basis and an ongoing basis to try to further improve the program going forward. You know, I have stated that, for example, if someone were someone else were to come in here and pick up this program at this point in time, I think it cost them two years to uh, reestablish the momentum and figure out some of the pitfalls that we've had to learn in the last seven quarters. Well, it is sort of a learn-as-you-go kind of a situation. I mean, you started off, there was no model, nobody had ever done this before, so you really started off at square one, didn't you? Well, that's right, and it's interesting that you make that observation because I was speaking at a conference in uh, New Orleans a few months ago, and uh, I hosted a meeting of several other organizations that are involved in recycling, like mattresses, like batteries, like paint. Paint's a new big initiative, gaining a lot of traction across the U.S. And, and as that dinner discussion went on, it was pretty clear that everybody was looking to care uh, for some help and guidance of what we had learned, what are some of the pitfalls and issues. And as a result of that, we're hoping to have a meeting in Washington in uh, August of those organizations to talk about just that. How can we learn from one another? How can we support one another going forward to solve some of these issues? I see. Now, getting back to the first quarter, <clears throat> are the results pretty much what you would hope for, what your goals were, or, you know, in terms of good, bad, and different, how, how does that fall? Well, I think we saw what I expected in the first quarter. We saw a little dip in the total pounds that were recycled. Uh, I'm sorry, the total pounds that were recovered from the landfill because the first quarter is a slow selling season. And as the pounds of sales go, so the pounds of recycled old carpet coming right, out go. Right. We, I would expect a very nice recovery and pickup for the second quarter and the third quarter. And that would be consistent with the trends we've seen since the program started. I don't have a crystal ball, so that's not a guarantee, but the expectation is we'll see growth there. The other interesting thing, though, we did see in the first quarter was an uptick in the recycled output pounds, even though the recovered pounds were down a little bit. And that's a result of selling material out of inventory. And that's a positive trend, dropping the inventory of processed material. Tells you the markets are, are getting a little better. I see. So I guess uh, a collector, a processor, is in, he's, you know, he's going to take whatever he can get through the front door and hopefully somebody buys it out of the back door. Well, I think that's the key to success, Dave. If you can't sell what you're collecting, yeah. you're in trouble pretty quickly. But, you're I mean, in a new industry where there's not a lot up and down the street that even know there is such a product as post-consumer carpet, that sounds kind of like an iffy type of a type of a model to me. Well, I think it's a challenge for our processors at this point in time. But I also would tell you that, you know, Going back to that message, we're learning as we go here, and we're trying to adjust in real time. Um, we've, uh, we've got an initiative to try to increase uh, non-nylon pounds of recycled output. We're doing that through a new incentive for processors of post-consumer carpet and downstream users of post-consumer carpet. Details are probably too much to go into in an in a interview like this, but... If uh, people download the annual report that was just published to the CARE and the Cal Recycle websites, they can get a hint at that with more details coming. So you're offering an incentive to somebody come up, somebody to come up with a with a plan for products, ways to use 
post-consumer polyester? Well, it's a little bit more than just a plan. It's a performance-based incentive. So if you can consume more pounds of non-nylon materials, there is an incentive there for you to do that. Um, if you can, for the, for the collector, I'm sorry, for the processors, if you exceed a target that was set uh, based on average for 2012, there's a bonus pool that gets created each quarter that you're eligible to participate in if you, if you exceed that target number. And it's distributed based on your contribution to exceeding the target. So we're trying to drive performance-based uh, recognition here in, as part of the remuneration program. All of these elements of this model, the ones you just mentioned, the incentives, was that something that CARE came up with at this thing? And I guess the, the body that you work with in California is Cal Recycle? That's right. Cal Recycle has appointed us as the carpet stewardship organization based on the plan we submitted and they approved. And, and it's up to CARE to figure out how to use those funds okay. in a responsible fashion to advance you know, not only landfill diversion of carpet, which is one of the big objectives, but also to in increase the amount of output resulting from processing post-consumer carpet and also to create jobs in the state of California. And we are having success in all three of those areas. Probably not as rapidly as some people would like to see, but the fact is that we're, we're better today than we were, you know, a year ago this time. And my expectation is we're on a track to see continued growth, okay. especially with the new incentives. So increasing the outflow, that I suppose is two things, probably more than two things, but all I can only think of two is efficiency on the inside, getting more carpet from the, or getting more material from the carpet you collect and finding more places on the outside that can use this stuff. I think you've hit the key nail on right on the head there. At some point in time, we're going to see the issue of getting enough raw material in the door post-consumer carpet, but that's not our biggest challenge today. What role does Cal Recycle play? Are they basically <clears throat> overseeing this and they see what you're doing and they say, hey, what's this, what's that? But in, in essence, you're carrying the ball here, it seems like. Well, we're, we're, we're doing the heavy lifting for implementation of the program. There's no question about it. But I would like to acknowledge the folks at Cal Recycle because I think we have a great working relationship. I know the CARE Board really stepped up during the negotiations and the design of this plan that was accepted by Cal Recycle. And uh, Georgina did a, Georgina Sikorsky, my predecessor, did a great job of stored, sorting this through the process and getting us to the point where we had a viable plan. There were a lot of details that had to be sorted out. Even something as simple as putting place an independent accounting firm who audits or reviews people against the agreed upon procedures to make sure that they're following the guidelines uh, required a lot of uh, attention to detail. So uh, a good program was put in place, a program that's growing and, and expanding. And we have uh, a monthly review meeting with Cal Recycle. Uh, quarterly, we go over all the results of the quarter submissions once they've been reviewed and approved by the SFOC. We share all that data very transparently with Cal Recycle. It gets posted to their website and our website so the citizens of California, it's their money, can see you know, how we're handling the money and how we're moving this program forward.